Hello everyone. So I'm parked. I'm not driving. Uh, we're waiting for Emily to join. Oh, there she is. So Emily, if you want to click on request to join, let's see if I can see it. We thought, I thought I was going to be late today. <laughs> there we go. One second, guys. It takes a minute sometimes, even though I click on it. There we go. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Good to have you here. Thank you. It was crazy this morning because I'm like, I'm going to be late. <laughs> I thought I was gonna be late too. I don't know what happened. I got I got put together in time. I have no clue how that happened. It was probably the day, you know. It's one of those I, days. I know. <laughs> it's a Monday. So, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so, anyways, here we are. We're live. So, thank you so much for joining me. I've been actually inspecting, waiting for this. I'm gonna turn on my car because it's hot in here. Um, I've been uh, wanting to do this for so long. Because I feel like it's so important, you know. Oh, know. Um, so I'm so happy that you could join and that you're going to give us the information, especially uh, during these weird times, you know, that we're going through. I know. Uh, right now. I know. It is a weird time. It's a scary time for sure. Uh, I know. So I'm going to just introduce us a little bit. So Emily, uh, our husbands, known each other. They're friends. And they've been friends for a long, long time. Um, <laughs> and so... <laughs> Even though we know each other, we've seen each other a bunch of times. Uh, it wasn't up to right now when Emily started um, all this thing about mass shooting that I'll let her explain a little bit better, that we actually connected a little bit more, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fun because like our husband, well, we live one state away. So we get together yeah. every like couple months as we're able to, which is yeah. I love. I've loved seeing more of you, Carolina. That's been so fun. Yes, me too. So I'm so excited and thank you again for joining us. So if you can explain a little bit what you do and what your plans are and yeah. what you talk about so people know. Sure. Everyone's joining. So this like journey I'm on was not intentional by any means, but essentially it started when my little girl was getting ready for kindergarten and she she's my oldest and she's like crazy strict with rules, a huge rule follower and kind of timid and um mm -hmm. I really wanted to talk to her about lockdown drills and kind of the situation that we're dealing with before she started school, but I didn't know what to say. And so I yeah. did what I do every time. I don't know how to talk to my kids about something, which is I went to the library and like tried to find a children's book about it. Um, and yeah. I didn't find anything that was exactly what I wanted because I was looking for, I guess, more the tactical side. Yeah. I found some things on like the emotional side of lockdown drills that it can be scary and hard. But I was looking for like, what do I tell her? Like, I need to tell um, my daughter what to do. And I don't find, I didn't find that. And so I started doing, you know, some reading and trying to figure out, well, what do we tell kids? And yeah. um, from that, I ended up creating the children's book that I was looking for. And I've had awesome support on that. Like um, Catherine Schweit, who created the FBI's active shooter program, she helped me with my manuscript. The people at Alert, which is, they're at um, Texas State University, and they're the federal yeah. government's, like, gold standard for active shooter response. They helped uh -huh. me with my manuscript. Um, so I'm, I'm fairly confident in what it teaches. But, yeah, yeah so I, I created that. That's coming out later this summer. And then from that, I kind of started learning more and more about our active shooting situation. Um, uh -huh. And... So now I'm doing, you know, trying to do more work with like prevention and I've started this right. Instagram account and yeah, it's been kind of an accidental, a happy accident, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm so grateful because you've helped me a lot to think about it because I also have a kid in kindergarten and it was kind of hard to explain to him because he doesn't understand that it could be a real thing, you yeah. know? It's like... I think, so I think it's, it's interesting because one of the, the things that the, um, AAP teaches it the, is that the difference between like toxic stress for children and normal yeah. stress, one of the biggest mm -hmm. differences between those two, which toxic stress, this is my definition, has a negative impact on their health and well being. I'm sure they define yeah. it a lot better than I yeah. do. But um, normal stress is something that they can, you know, cope with and learn resilience from. And one of the biggest differences between those two is caregiver support. But I feel like so often with lot, this situation, of active shootings mm -hmm. um the caregiver support lacks because parents freeze because it's yeah. terrifying to us it's paralyzing right and yeah. and then similar to like what you just said i found that 
the younger kids, the kids I, I wrote my book for, which is like five to eight, uh-huh. they're not crazy affected by the lockdown drills yet. Cause I think they're still processing what we're saying what? can happen. Uh-huh. Yeah. Exactly. It's really kind of the older elementary kids, junior high kids that seem to start having major anxiety about it. I was just talking with one young girl who's um, in junior high and she wrote a paper on lockdown drills and the emotional effect it has on students. Uh-huh. And she was especially bothered by her younger brother who was in first grade kindergarten and how he seemed so like just nonchalant about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, th- I do think it's more distressing to those um, older ages. So if we can start the discussion when they're young and keep it going, you know, their right. whole life really until active shootings are no longer a thing. So, yeah, that's, that's great. So what could you tell us parents that we don't know how to face this? What would you, how would you approach this situation with your kids? Like, what would you tell them? So, um, I think, I think first of all, you know, know your kid and tailor it according to them. But for my daughter, who's almost seven, I've actually never used the word shooter with her. Um, I haven't Mm -hmm. felt the need to like illustrate to her what can happen. Um, Mm -hmm. But I have had conversations with her. So I've kept it more basic, but I've had conversations with her about if the school feels unsafe, if you're somewhere that you don't feel safe, then I want you to do these these things. And so those things I tell her are the first thing you need to do is listen to a trusted adult. If you're with your teacher, do exactly as your teacher says, because they're going to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. And that's really the most important thing you can teach your kids. So if you have a child who struggles with following directions, um, you know, keep, keep working on that with them because it's, it's a safety thing as well as, you know, it's not just a, and I'm sure all the parents who have behavior problems are like, I'm trying, I get it. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. My point is don't get fatigued, keep going. Um, So that's the first thing is teach them to follow directions of their caregivers. And then after that, if they're somewhere without a caregiver, teach them to run. So um, what I've told my daughter is like, if you're walking back from, say you went to the office and you got your lunch that I dropped off for you, or you went to the bathroom and you suddenly feel like school's not safe, you can run in the halls. I want you to break that rule. And that's something I had to work with her a lot on. Cause like I said, she's like rules, right? And so- right. She's that like, well, yeah. I'll have to ask someone first. And I was like, no, you, I'm telling you, if you don't feel safe, you must run. Like, I kind of gave it to her as an order. <laughs> yeah. And then I told That's her um, she can hide. And so you can hide like in places that are normally off limits, a teacher's lounge, a restroom that's normally only for teachers, a classroom that's not yours. Like anything is on limits if you feel unsafe. Um, and then I also with the with the run one thing that I feel like a lot of parents get hung up on and I've seen teachers get hung up on this too is um, if someone's walking back to the bathroom and they're like what if all the classrooms are closed right what if what if the lockdown yeah. happened and I, I was in the bathroom well you know if they're in the bathroom they could they could stay in the bathroom and try to wait it out but also um, it's okay for them to run out of the out of the building altogether which is crazy to a lot of parents this is new this is different but it's something that historically we the the experts are saying that historically we've had good outcomes with that so i have told my daughter if you're near an exit you leave the school if you don't feel safe you run away from the school and go find a store owner go find a neighbor and tell them you need help and we will find you um and then i always end these conversations with saying your school's very safe you know this is this is like preparing for an earthquake you're probably never going to be in a serious earthquake but we talk about it anyway this is like talking about like a how to respond if someone tries to kidnap you no one's ever going to try to kidnap you most likely but we talk about it anyway so reinforcing how rare this is is um i think really important and yeah i think i think that can help with the anxiety aspect too yeah, it's, it's funny because I've told my son the same thing. I'm like, if worse comes to worse, you even open a window and get out. It doesn't matter, mommy. We'll find you. Yeah. But but it, it's kind of hard to 
have those topics with our kids and not know how to approach them, you know, like yes. you said. I can't wait for your book to come out because I feel like that's going to help a lot of kids and a lot of parents that really don't know how to, you know, this is a new situation we've never had to go through. And yeah. It's kind of scary it for is. all of us. I, I hope it helps. I hope it helps mostly with um, empowering parents. Because like I said, I was really hesitant to bring this up with my daughter because I didn't know what to teach her. What yeah. do I tell her in that situation where she's coming back from the bathroom and like, what do I tell her? And my book addresses all that. And it also has mm -hmm. like a list of questions at the end that parents can use for further discussion with their kids, where it's things like going over, like, let's list the people that you trust at the different places that you go. So if you go to daycare, who are the adults that you trust, you know, and let's talk about emergency exits. That's another big thing that I've, I've learned yeah. um, is so often we associate our exits with the one that we entered through, right? No, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and teaching ourselves and teaching our kids to think of all the exits. And um, so that's kind of something I've started even with my, my younger kids. My middle is three, um, is pointing out emergency exits, just like I'd point out a fire truck. Um, I, wouldn't, uh -huh. I don't say like, something terrible could happen and that's where we'll go. I say, <laughs> I say, whoa, look at that big, huge door, you know, when we're in Target and then he's looking at it and I'm saying, if you open that door, a big loud noise will go through it. So we don't want to open it, but one day you might go through it with mom. Like we might go through it together someday. And then, you know, when my daughter's six, when they get older, I tell them, if you feel unsafe, you can go through that door. I know we've told you, don't open it. It's got an alarm. Don't open it. It's got an alarm. If you feel unsafe, open it. Set the alarm off. It's okay. okay. You yeah. know? And so yeah. making sure we're shifting those conversations and that we're not just stopping with the don't set the emergency door alarm off no. and that we're following up yeah. with there's a time to do that. It's funny because kids are so literal. literal. Like you say, like they are. With adults, we understand, but with them, they follow rules. Yeah. So yeah. they think I can't go through there. I can't go through there. You know, like they don't understand that. Yeah. Well, it's okay in some circumstances. You know? Yes. So that's the yeah. good thing. Um, another question I wanted because we've been talking about a lot. It's about schools because I did ask my Beisha, Um, She is in seventh grade and I asked her how to report if you hear like, what, what do you do on like in school if a kid says they're going to come with the gun or they're going to do something to your school or to somebody or if they're doing something to themselves who do you go to and in our case she's like oh i don't know maybe to the counselor yeah um, so i felt like <clears throat> there wasn't anything in our school and then when i kind of asked they don't really have a system like we were talking so yeah. i don't know if you can elaborate uh, to give a, a few ideas to parents of how to approach your school maybe what what there is out there for us absolutely so this, this is maybe my passion. <laughs> I love I my book and everything, but I love, I love talking about more prevention stuff. Um, yeah. So what, what the gold standard is, is an anonymous reporting system. And so basically what we found with like active shooting situations is that after the fact, we can talk to people who knew this shooter and we find out everyone had one piece of the puzzle, mm -hmm. but nobody had the whole piece like all the pieces. So we couldn't put the yeah. puzzle together. So what we're trying to achieve with an anonymous reporting system is something that will catch the puzzle pieces. Right. And so right. Um, you can look at states like Denver has a really robust anonymous reporting system. There's also an organization called Sandy Hook Promise. They provide anonymous reporting systems for free. They, you know, they run totally on donations. But basically what what these systems are is they're apps or text messages, text message lines or hotlines that are monitored 24 seven. And anyone can file a report and you can include your name if you want to or not, if you don't want to. Um, and so you file, say you hear a classmate, Basha hears someone say, you know, something upsetting to her, but she's like, I don't know, it was probably a joke. And going to the counselor feels extreme yeah. or, you know, or, or yeah. I don't want to, be seen. Yeah, I don't want to be associated with it. Well, and if she can just send a text, hey, I heard this person say this, you know, and she sends yeah. it in. And then the team that monitors that line 24 seven, uh, they triage it according to how important it is. So if it's something like, um, I don't know, something of lesser importance, yeah. um, they can just 
you know, it goes out by email, but if it's highly important, then that's phone calls and whatever to get to the people at the school or local law enforcement who can then get involved and handle this situation. So, um, yeah, looking at how your school handles reports is really important. And I've, I've been doing a, a segment on my account that's really, I, I enjoy, and I'm trying to think of clever taglines <laughs> because like I said, these are, they're um, anonymous reporting systems. So it's A-R-S, it's ARS. <laughs> so I call it assess my arts right now. I don't know, I'll have yeah. to think if that's what I, but um, it, you know, going at your, going to your district or going to your school and asking or doing research online and seeing how would I report bullying? How would I report um, suicide ideation? How would I report hearing yeah. something disturbing, right? And checking to make sure that you have a system that's anonymous 24 seven, it's in a format that teens would use. That means like text or app, as opposed to like my district right mm -hmm. now, we have a form a written form so you have to go to someone and be like can i have the bullying form yeah like, that will be weird <laughs> no that's not good and um yeah and so looking at that and then advocating for that in your school um can really make a big difference because the fbi has found that on average an active shooter demonstrates 4.7 concerning behaviors before their attack and that's that's so that's 4.7 times that's an average um, and those incidences cause more than a minimum amount of concern. So that means that whoever saw the behavior, that in order for it to count, it has to be two things. It has to be observable by someone else, and it has to have caused more than a minimum amount of concern. And so that's 4.7 times that someone's like, wow, that was creepy, right? Or whatever the right. situation is. And if we have something to catch the, wow, that was creepy moments, yeah. then we might have a chance of getting someone help before they do something devastating, right? right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and it's funny because, you know, kids are usually like, well, I don't want a title tell. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. But if you say, like you say, if it's anonymous, they pretty much will feel like, well, it's okay. I'll do it. And if it's nothing, it's nothing, you know? Yeah. And so. that, that's the thing. A lot of times the people who see the behaviors are people who are really close to the shooter. So all the more reason to protect them yeah. as, they, mm -hmm. as they speak up. And the other thing that's um, really powerful, and so a lot of these systems, the anonymous reporting systems, when you implement them in your school district, they spend a lot of time on education, um, teaching kids yeah. what kind of things are, yeah. you know, worthy of being reported or what's not. Um, and I believe it's Sandy Hook Pro Promise has a saying where they say, um, you tell to get someone help and you snitch to get someone in trouble. Right. And so they're already <laughs> teaching the kids the difference between like, different. are you snitching just to get back at someone and it's maybe not something that should actually be reported or it's with malintent or are you, are you telling because or you're concerned? Help, yeah. 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 And that's another really important aspect. Um, in addition to having these anonymous reporting systems yeah. is having a culture of respecting the people who report who re report honestly right yeah. so um we just had a situation in texas where a girl made a report and she's been kind of like punished for it and it's a real shame because she's she's being punished for having created like panic i guess but if the concern is legitimate and and honest then it needs yeah. to be something that we say hey there was no validity to this report but we're grateful you spoke up you did yeah. the right thing in trying to keep people safe exactly because then who's gonna want to do it you know exactly yeah so mm -hmm. yeah. well that is amazing there's so much information i don't know if you want to add anything because i know we could talk all day <laughs> i know we really could um let me think i don't i don't know we did we covered some good topics here <laughs> yeah so what i'm going to add is if you guys have like more questions if you want to know more just follow emily because she has great content all the time with all this information she's up to date with it all the time so i would say just follow her on instagram and then of course when your book comes out i can't wait to see it because i feel like that's gonna go boom because everybody needs it oh, so, oh, well i I'm hope waiting for that. you know um i hope it can help parents but i will say about my book um i'm selling it like so Really what I'm selling and selling the book is the experience of having something tangible, tangible with like adorable oh. pictures. I, my illustrator was amazing that you can sit down and read with your kids. But as far as the information and the teaching that is being taught in the book, um, I'm trying to put all of that on my Instagram because yeah. 
I've been yeah. in situations before where financially I can't make some sort of purchase yeah. and I just don't want anyone to not have access to this good information um, or have to go do all the digging that I've done to get to it uh, yeah. I, I, because of a money thing. So, you know, if you want to buy the book to support me, I appreciate it, but also follow my Instagram account. I'll tell you how to talk to your kids and help in any way I can. And along that note, um, I mentioned I'm doing that little mini series on my account, yeah. Assess My Arse. <laughs> yes. Um, is that too crass? Maybe I should change it. No, I like it. I'm <laughs> well, following a little. <laughs> yeah, if anyone's watching and wants me to take a look at your district, I would be happy to. I have this cute little report card that I fill out, and then I send it to you in your DMs so that you can see um, what my opinion is on, like, if I were in your district, this is what yeah. I would work with my district on. That is great information. Well, thank you so much, Emily, for your time. Yeah. We appreciate it. And so I'm going to leave this live on my Instagram and then I'm going, uh, going to put it on my YouTube channel. So it'll be there available for anybody that wants to watch it later on or pass it on to a family member or friend or whatever. Okay. Well, thank you so hey, much. And I will put your information. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh, and we'll talk to you later. Yes, Thanks. You. Bye guys. Thank Bye. you for watching. Bye-bye.